we are going to talk about how to design boards which will fly to space. You know, we are going to talk about uh, difference between designing standard boards and the boards for space. Uh, for example, how to select uh, components for, for this kind of boards, what to be careful about, what is interesting about designing these kind of boards, how to test them. And uh, that's what this video is going to be about. I really hope you will find it interesting and uh, you will find it useful. I'm not an expert in designing boards for space, so I had a call with Cedric. He works at Astrobotic Company. They are designing lunar landers and rovers. I recorded my call with Cedric and that's what you will see in this video. We are going to start talking about component selection, you know, how to decide what kind of components you can use on the board which uh, you can send to space. So uh, here is my call with Cedric. What uh, I would like to know, if someone mm -hmm. would like to design, for example, their own CubeSat, mm -hmm. can they use like standard components or if they use standard components, then uh, there is very high chance that the mission is going to fail very quickly or it's not mm -hmm. going to work at all or mm. you know what do you need to be careful when you are selecting components for something what goes to space that, that's that's a great question and, and i would say it depends on uh, first on your on your mission um, so if you're if you plan to build a cubesat that is uh scheduled to spend most of his lifetime in the close to let's see uh banalet belt where you have a presence a lot of particle or charged particles that could eat your system then yes you need to to make sure that the component you picked are uh, uh radiation hardened for instance um if you design a probe that goes very deep in the solar system and cross, uh, you know, I, I don't know, Jupiter or <laughs> other planet there where you could face, you could see a lot of radiation as well. Uh, yes, you, you you want to you you want to pick a, a radiation hardened component. I, I I think the the philosophy of it is reduce the risk as much as possible for your mission. You know, there is space is so dangerous for for the electronics and and you want to lower the risk where it's obvious that there is a risk because of the nature of your of your parts um at the end of the day you depending on your mission uh you may not you may not to radiation harden all your of your part because of the cost right so and not all the parts are available in radiation harden uh category so what you want to do is to design a system that is radiation tolerant so that that's a big difference here so you want to make sure that your the printing circuit board you design and your in, in, in all your circuits um, can withstand uh, glitches or uh, perturbation due to the space environments okay so and, this is interesting so basically mm -hmm. uh, it is going to happen. Something is going to interrupt or do something with the components and you cannot really fully maybe protect it. You just mm -hmm. need to design it the way that it still will work perfectly fine. Exactly. So um, for, for instance, let, let's take a, a simple example. So let's say you have a processor that is responsible of keeping track of the status of, of your system. Let's uh, a watchdog, for instance. You have a watchdog processor running. You may not want to use a commercial version of, of that watchdog, right? Because it's it's a critical piece of the puzzle that cannot fail, mm -hmm. right? Because if the watchdog fails, your full system fail. So, it is a, a highly recommended or must. <laughs> To put is to to use a, for instance a red hard uh, watchdog in that case to make sure that your system 
your watchdog will be the last piece of your puzzle to fail if something goes wrong. Okay. So, so there are components the, which you would like to use, uh, the components which are specifically designed for space. Yes. And these are the components which will make sure that even mm. if the other parts of your system, which may not be so mm -hmm. uh, space tolerant, if they mm -hmm. fail, this mm -hmm. really good processor or watchdog, for example, will make yep. sure they will come up again and they will start working in the, again correctly. Yeah, yeah, and actually, it's we, you, yes, you're, you're absolutely right, and it's especially true nowadays with all the booming industry with those hundreds of satellites orbiting Earth right now. You know, with the cubesats, uh, as we saw before. You know, um, th th there is a big push of trying to use uh, cuts for space application. Um, uh, for components of the shelf, sorry. Uh, okay, I, I am thinking like what cards? I will put there some cards. <laughs> <So, laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, like you, you could use, for instance, uh, AC Q, uh, Q uh, two hundred automotive parts. You know, uh, because they have been tested to to stress. You know, to vibration already, so they they pass a certain amount of. Uh, of safety and using those you know in some maybe in some aspect of your design is acceptable you know because they are not a part of your critical path of your system and maybe if some subsystem you know a reset is acceptable and you can recover uh, gracefully from from a, a reset in some some function of your system if you can accept that risk then it's fine you know um uh, so yeah, so I think uh, uh, system engineering is definitely very important when you design uh, a PCB. Uh, so um, oh, I'm sorry for interrupting you. So basically, oh, yeah. maybe uh, what we can say, you some kind of need to split your system into something like this is the most critical and must mm -hmm. never fail. And then mm -hmm. this can sometimes reset, nothing is going to happen. And this exactly. one can sometimes calculate wrong values and it's fine because there are two others which can calculate same value and we can compare them. I, I, exactly, you, you're right. So I, I didn't mention it, but also redundancy of your design is another way to, to make your system uh, tolerant to failure. So uh, if you have two system or two circuit working in parallel uh, that could back up each other, uh, then that that that's a way to to making sure that uh, your, your system will be <laughs> to maximize your your uptime for your system. So that that's a good way to do that as well. Okay. But it's also it, it, there is also a very interesting uh, question is you know it, it, using redundant system you know because the more you you put redundant system you also increase your chance of exposure to particles, right? Just from a surface perspective of your circuit, the, the bigger your circuit is, the higher chance you have to be exposed to, to particles. So it's a fine balance between uh, having multiple circuits doing the same thing and multiplying the chance of being hit by a particle at the same time. So yeah, th there is a quite interesting uh, problematic there. <laughs> okay, um, so this is interesting. Okay, so I understand now, theoretically, you can use also automotive components but maybe only for some part in yes, the design. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about definitely. the uh, like standard uh, when we are talking we were talking I guess mostly about chips for example but, but what about like uh, capacitors, resistors, diodes, transistors? Mm -hmm. uh, do you need to use some special resistors or yeah, so you you can uh, you can use surface mounted uh, resistors, you know, standard. The, no, stand, yes, yeah, the, the same. You know, you know uh, we if you use them, you 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 can use a definitely automotive one. You know, I. What will uh, happen if a particle will you know crash on a resistor? Is it going to do something? Is it going to change resistance, for example? <laughs> So yeah, so that's uh, that that's some so the selection of the resistor maybe not so much the resist well a little bit, but 
in general, you have to derate a lot your parts uh, because what you can expect is that their performance over time will degrade uh, because of the slow exposure to, to radiation. So all the components you select, capacitors, resistors, transistors, typically, you know, if you use, I'm just throwing a number here, but let's say you have a transistor that manage a 3.3 volt, for instance, maybe you will pick uh, a 10 volt, you know, or, or a 15 volt transistor for that. Well, in space, you may not want to do that. You may want to pick the grading above, you know, 25 or maybe, mm -hmm. um, maybe not 50, because you know, over time, the performance of that transistor will degrade um, because of the exposure to radiation. Radiation and also uh, uh, temperature swing as well. You know, the part could fatigue more rapidly. Um, so a capacitor as well is another good example, right? So um, if if you if you need to decouple, for instance, uh, uh, a three volt rail, uh, you may you, you don't want to pick a five volt capacitor or six point three volt capacitors, for instance. You you will probably use fifty or one hundred volt capacitors, you know, just so you know that you have the right clearance. That's something else too that is very important. So the risk of arcing in space. Uh, so you want to have uh, artificially uh, slightly bigger footprint, so you reduce this chance of arcing in your system. Why the arcing would be happening more often in space? Yeah, so you you well you don't have any grounding uh, while you you fly, and uh, <laughs> and uh, an interesting uh, uh, phenomena that exists is uh, depending on. Um, if you have uh, a part of your system that is exposed uh, for an extended period of time to uh, to the sun, for instance, you will have a buildup of, of charges there. Um, and if they are not electrically connected to the part that is facing the deep space, for instance, uh, you could have uh, a potential created between those two, mm -hmm. uh, two pieces. And if you don't have the clearance, you could have uh, arcing um, uh, generated because of the dis different difference uh, of potential. Uh, so does it mean, uh, based on what you just explained, uh, you would mm -hmm. like to use, for example, bigger footprints rather than smaller? Like you, if you have, if you have uh, different, because you have different sizes capacitors, for example. So mm -hmm. uh, would you rather use bigger one? let's say 1206 and no 0402 or yeah yeah so d d definitely yes you you want to 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 artificially increase the, physically the size of of, of your footprint uh, and it's not only because of arcing but i guess also because of vibration because there will be better uh, soldering that that's a good question um so yes it's true uh, as well so you will have uh, a better uh you know, structure, uh, your component will be more uh, better installed on, on your on your part. Um, also, you, you when you can, uh, it's uh, it, more specifically for integrated circuits, uh, it is better to use uh, leaded uh, parts, uh, because they, you know, they, they have more compliance, I guess, with the with, with vibration. Um, and that's why maybe I can share a picture here. Um, if you can see mm -hmm. here, uh, can you see the image? Yes, I can see. Uh, great. So uh, here I took uh, uh, from the web <laughs> uh, one uh, um, the same version of the of a of a processor, one that is industrial rated. Uh, the one here, which is in a plastic package, and another one here that is radiation hardened. Mm -hmm. um, both are both have uh, uh, lead termination, which 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 is great. Um, and you, most of the part you will find uh, in the red hard category will be sold sold as a, a, f a flat pack. You know, so they will be uh, with legs like this with pins uh straight um and it's up to the pcb designer or uh, pcb uh, uh, assembly uh, 
to essentially trim the trim oh, the I pins. was just thinking about that if you if you cut it or something. Yeah, yeah. So you have some specific uh, uh, piece of uh, fixture that yes, well, you you trim them and then you have to bend them uh, to so it, it it works for for your system. That that package is actually driven by the I I uh, by the by a military standard, the US military standard used to, is a big, as you can imagine, big customer to Red Heart uh, components. And there is a lot of uh, uh, history using those, that form factor. And that's why, you know, the Red Heart form factor is, there is still a lot of parts that, that look like that. I know, um, how do you know what length you mm -hmm. may want to use? Um, that you have to work with the there, there is some uh companies that are experts in designing the 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 bending tools to to get to the right profile mm -hmm. uh then it it it's up to you you know you have a, a given footprint and uh you design the footprint uh, so it's some so kind it of can. tool where you put the chip you just and you have um, everything is bending and cut over uh, yeah, I've never seen it in action, but I suspect it's 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 probably not too far from what you were just uh, <laughs> showing me. Uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's like a press. I, I imagine that you know from the from from the lead here. Uh, um, but yeah, and uh, you can see the the leads are are uh, gold plated, uh, so that's to essentially the. The integrated circuit is encapsulated with a cap here, a golden cap on top of it, just to protect from uh, radiation. Um, so, and yeah, this is basically so that... same microcontroller. Yeah. Um, I suspect. Well, Eighty maybe some... sixty-four M1 yeah. and sixty-four yeah. M1, the same one. Yeah. Inside, they do some. Uh, in in general, I know they change. Um, they change the substrate of the substrate, sorry, of the, um, of the AC in general, just to improve the, to, to reduce the chance of, uh, of internal damage due to um, uh, charged particles. So I, I know the, there is some slack, well, they're not, it's not simply just repackaging that okay. microcontroller into this one. They do some uh, material change inside. So uh, the, the chip is more, is more robust there. Um, is so. the performance same? But uh, functionally, uh, I, I would suspect yes. Uh, it's uh, even and, like a working speed or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And w what happened most of the time, you know, when you build your your prototype, you don't go directly with the Red Heart version because those parts are very, very expensive, mm -hmm. um, and the lead time is well, when or uh, nowadays everything is long lead time. But uh, maybe shorter those are... than the standard one. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So standard lead time is is longer on average than the you know as you can imagine the plastic package here. Under hundred uh, weeks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not one hundred weeks, but uh, it's 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 uh, yeah maybe halfway. Um, so what you do generally, you know, you prototype your system. You know, if you you're you're breadboarding and your early prototype, you use just regular. A plastic package because you can get them more quickly you can do your tester uh, rapidly and uh, once you are ready to do your environmental testing then you switch to red mm -hmm. hard uh, component but before that functionally yes they uh, not all the manufacturer make them you know in both version it's nice when they can do both because you know for that specific reason you can prototype it you can test on on your bench top and uh, once you are ready to spin your board with a hard art version, then you can do that. So what kind of uh, chips you may want to use in uh, this kind of designs, like microcontrollers? Do you use also like processors? We use processors in general. It, it depends on the on the application uh, you use. FPGAs. Uh, FPGAs. FPGAs are pretty big uh, in the space industry. You will see the, if, if you look at if you if you look online for FPGA for space, aerospace, yeah, can we, can you will see it for something. Oh, let's see. Uh, we can pick Xilinx, for instance. 
right? So you can oh. see, you know, um, Xilinx is a bit uh, big manufacturer. Um, they do defense space, uh, all type of uh, applications. And, um, you know, you have different type of grades, defense grade, space grade, and uh, yeah. Uh, so FPGA, yes, are widely used in uh, in space. Um, I guess it's because uh, you can put there anything you want, and if needed, you can replace the code or. Exactly. Yes. So the during the development process, it's nice to to be, to, to have the flexibility of a FPGA. Even if uh, it's in space, and you find out like, oh, we did mistake we have to update firmware yeah 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 no you, or, you're right yes or you can That's... change the emission or something yeah yeah and also um uh, some of them are um uh, so the aerospace one uh, are uh intrinsically immune to radiation effects so they won't suffer uh soft errors so soft errors are um it's an error you, you get whenever you get exposed to uh, radiation. So for instance, it could result in bit flips or uh, multiple bit flips sometimes, um, or error in register that could then be detected and corrected. Um, FPGAs that are designed for space are immune to that just because by construction of the chip. So, mm -hmm. so they don't suffer uh, those type of things. So that's why also they are widely used in space. So even the uh, memory inside of the FPGA is much better than if you, I don't know, use some standard Component. Memory, memory. You have to be careful with the memory uh, you select in general. Uh, you you want to have uh, memories that uh, have uh, error correction and detection. Uh, you want to, de depending on the criticality of the error of your system, to you, you may want to have a red hard uh, memory. Um, so yeah, memory is uh, definitely sensitive uh, in general to to radiation exposure. Um, so, so there will be probably problems with memory. Yeah, yeah, you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, you have to be uh, uh, definitely. You, you need. So, so that what's interesting too is the during uh, you you can decide to to qualify your memory. You know, if if you cannot, let's say it's a very specific or very weird memory you want to use for instance and, and you cannot find it in, in the market as a red hard you can still do a qualification of your uh, of your memory uh, and expose it to radiation and qualify it yourself you know uh, maybe maybe the device will operate just fine you know so, so by, there by are chance. some test houses where you can go and expose yes. your finished board to radiation and you will see what is going to fail Exactly. Yes. Yes. And you can pinpoint exactly where you want to apply the your your charges, and uh, you can uh, instrument your your PCB to detect the behavior. You know, for instance, um, let's say you want to to test a, a RAM, for instance, a DRAM a chip. You could preload your DRAM with known data, for instance, and you would uh, blast their <laughs> your RAM with particles. And um, generally, those type of the phenomena that will happen, you, you will generally notice a bit flip. So what you would do, you would have a test program that run in parallel that just monitor uh, periodically your, the content of your memory. And if you detect that you have a bit flip there, then you you understand that you, your your device is sensitive is it, to radiation. Is it also radiation. a problem with flash memories? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. So yeah. even your program can be damaged. Yep. 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 Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So you you need to be extremely careful uh, the type of memory. So there is there's there is different flavors of uh, flash memories. You have the NOR flash. You have the NAND flash. Um, the NOR flash. I believe it's less sensitive to to bit flips uh, than the NAND flash. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, there is there a lot of uh, there is a lot of literature that that goes <laughs> with uh, what te what technology you you should bring, what otherwise you should avo uh, avoid. Uh, NASA actually has uh, 
as a database. Maybe I can show you yeah. here. Oops. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that, that's a... Here, oh. uh, yeah. So NASA has a database essentially that compile all the parts that have flew in space. So if you don't know, you know, if uh, if you could pick a given connector or if you want to check if, hey, is So instead is, of DigiKey, you go here. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> so essentially, yes, they list all the parts that have uh, flew in space. If you click um, on parts, what, what will show there? Part list, oh, here it is. Oh, there are resistors. There you go. Capacitors, yeah. connectors, relays, resistors. So yeah, those those parts. If you look in the document, those parts are I flew. Uh, if if you click on all space. the resistors, for example, there will be like specific mm, part yeah. numbers. Um. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. I don't know if you can. I don't know if it's um, export sensitive or something like that. I don't know if I can ah, okay. Uh, okay. share that. Okay. Maybe I don't know. Okay. No. Mm. Okay. So that just if people <laughs> would like to see it, then they can they can go. There. Yeah. Yeah. I don't if know. they see uh, the document. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. I understand. Um, I, I I don't know the. It's a good point. I don't know too. <laughs> it's good. So, point. but yeah, essentially here you can see uh, the radiation effect. So you have the same type of part listed there. Uh, so NASA provide a lot of information here mm -hmm. um, for the for the public to to see. So it, it's it's nice. It's definitely uh, handy. This um, would be definitely the place where I would start because I I had no idea what kind of components you can for example use mm -hmm. so i guess you can start here and then you mm -hmm. will see what you can buy mm -hmm. and uh, another aspect too uh, that i didn't mention and the difference between the, the i'm sorry those package and, and those as well is um the, the use of plastic in space could be a problem uh because of the outgassing. Uh, so outgassing is, uh, you know, when you when you buy a new car and you you, you get the smell when you get the, when you get inside a new car, uh, that's outgassing. So it's chemical product that get released from the plastic and all the you know all all, all the material in the car essentially. So they are slowly decomposing. So you that process gets accelerated in vacuum and it could uh, make the the component more uh, fragile um so all the the plastic connector if if, if you if, if if you decide to go with a plastic connector you have to be extremely careful that um the outgassing uh, satisfies the nasa standard so nasa so it will specify kind of break then or it could break, yes, uh, because you know it will lose. Uh, it, it yes, it, it will break. You know, it will become more um, fragile. How do you say? Fragile, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and there is a, a rate of outgassing that is acceptable, uh, but if you exceed that, then you you have to pick uh, something else that is uh, mm -hmm. low outgassing. So. Uh, definitely something else to to watch for. So that's um, same what can happen with the packages of the chip, so they can like crack or. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep. How long exactly. does it take? Um, I, I, I don't know. I suspect you know it's for longer mission because uh, even if the process is is faster. Uh, you know, I, I, I some of my tools you. in my office they decompose in two years and <laughs> i can't use them uh, anymore because they are so sticky <laughs> it, it, exactly right so it, it's kind of <laughs> it's probably the same the same process that is going on um so yeah it, exactly so that's uh the, the chemical change of, of the plastic over time uh just change the property um and uh yeah um the 
Okay, let's move to a different and, and, topic and, now. I think we okay. talk about this a lot. What, what else okay. do you have on these pictures? I'm sorry? What else do you have on these pictures? Oh, what do I have? Uh, good. Uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about PCB. And okay. uh, so here it's not a PCB. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I will get to that. So here you can see, so that's our lander here. And uh, what you, you can see around it, there are speakers. Um, and what we do here, we, we took our lander and we surrounded with speakers. And we essentially simulated the takeoff uh, of a rocket. So we are actually running acoustic testing on the lander. So the acoustic noise acoustic of the testing wow yeah. so during the during the takeoff the the noise generated by the by the engine of the rocket just you know as you can imagine vibrate just just like when you are at a concert you can feel the <laughs> the bass sometimes well your lander is at the top of the rocket and uh, you can imagine you know things are quite uh, shaky up there so we we simulate the the takeoff of a rocket with actual speakers and uh, we measure the vibration of the of the panel so here for instance you can see we have some uh, radiator here uh, so we we measure our vibration and uh, yeah we, we we verify that everything uh, behave uh, as expected um, of course be before we we do those uh, actual test we we do our, our our simulation with our with our software to verify that we we can accept a certain amount of, of vibration um and yeah and you can imagine that the structure is vibrating and so the pcbs right that are mounted inside so you 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 want to have enough uh, mounting points on your on your pcbs so you don't stress the parts that are mounted onto uh, Onto the onto the substrate. So uh, typically, what you what you will do, and maybe that uh, shift between you know between what is done in the general industry and space application, you will have way more mounting points on um, on your PCBs in general, just to give them to to, to add the rigidity and uh, uh, just so yes, they don't they don't vibrate and could parts would fly away, <laughs> you know, as the, as a board. Uh, a bent, for instance. So, yeah. But I would um, never expect you you test it with sound. So that's one. That's the acoustic test. So that generates a certain set of frequencies. Mm -hmm. But of course, we also have a shake table. Yeah. Um, those generate uh, various type of vibration. So here, sorry, let me explain a little bit what's going on here. Uh, we have a um, so the base here is the. Um, uh, a table mounted on big magnets, essentially, and the magnet just moves the the table around, and our lander is mounted on top of it, and we can generate various type of patterns. So, like for instance, uh, sinusoidal vibration or random or shock, all those type of things. You know, you will you will ex you for instance you will expose to shock when your different stage of your rocket. Uh, separate so you you, you can expect some uh, that some some shock um, value there um, so you, you want to simulate all of those scenarios and what we have here you can see you have a little mass attached to it we need to simulate the full system mm -hmm. with all of our payload mounted to it so we fully simulate the uh, the, the lander here and here it's not the actual lander it's a it's a structural yeah. model so before we actually build the final lander we have uh the the, the structural model equivalent um and we test it that way yeah so um wow this was interesting uh, i had no idea about these speakers i had no idea <laughs> <laughs> And, and we, you can see here, we, we attach uh, accelerometers here just to monitor the vibration of the mm -hmm. system as well. And same again, you know, NASA or the launcher provider requires uh, actually, you know, that we, we, we fit within an envelope. Um, so we, we, we don't want pieces flying everywhere mm -hmm. <laughs> during the takeoff. So um, I have other pictures here. Um, here it's an example of a, of a vacuum chamber. So that's a, a temperature vacuum chamber. So that's an interesting uh, 
uh, equipment, uh, you and, and it's very important uh, when you design PCB uh, and and in your general aerospace system to to to, to run your equipment in the TVAC chamber. So TVAC stands for a temperature vacuum chamber. So I'll, if I use TVAC, that, that's what I'm referring. That's what I'm referring to. So a, a TVAC chamber allows to verify that your thermal model is accurate when you design subsystem of your of your spaceship. So what you what you what you do typically when you design a PCB, you work in close relationship with your thermal engineer that will simulate the uh, power loss you have in your circuit board, for instance. And uh, through complicated software, th <laughs> thermal software essentially, they will be able to predict what where the and how the heat will dissipate onto your board. Um, because and... I think we need to explain once there is no vacuum, only the way how the heat is going to be transferred is through the structure of the board. You are absolutely right. Yes, or uh, the only way to dissipate the heat in space is through conduction or radiation. So conduction is when you have physical contact between your part or your PCB or your copper with a radiator. The a radiator is a piece of hardware that is capable of emitting, uh, dispersing the heat or dissipating the heat away from your system. Radiation is um, just the emission of uh, 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 like uh, uh, infrared, essentially. Um, just to, like when you stand close to uh, charcoal, you know you can you cannot see the, the you cannot see any fire, but you can feel the the heat. So that's what the that's how the heat gets transferred through radiation. So you have those two options. You cannot use the uh, the convection of the air to to cool down your equipment because obviously there is no air in space. So it's very important to to design carefully your PCB to maximize the path for for heat dissipation. And um, you can do that in a couple of ways. You know, you use a lot of copper, uh, you use a lot of heat sinks, uh, you could use thermal straps. But the heat sink, uh, I guess, has to be always connected somewhere. Uh, the heat sink needs to be connected to a radiator, not to a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, you could, uh, let's see, you could, you, you, you use a lot of VS, you know, because you try to gr grab away the your, your your heat away from your part. So uh, when you use VS and you can tie it to a plane or power plane or ground plane, you usually do that. Um, and if you can uh, at thermally connect that to to your radiator, it's even better. Uh, so you try really to be careful uh, how you manage your heat on your PCB. Well, when we are talking and... about VS, oh. I know, uh, you know, sometimes I read these articles like air can be trapped inside of vias or somewhere. So uh, mm -hmm. does it mean when uh, you are designing PCB or manufacturing PCB, which goes to space, you use some special techniques for mask or something? Yes. Uh, so uh, the first thing is uh, you well, you, you, yes, you, you you need to be careful with both, uh, air trapped in inside your PCBs. Uh, so if you use buried VS, for instance, or uh, yeah, so that's definitely something you need to watch for. Uh, you you could require you could request to fill those VS, you know, uh, as part of the assembly process to mitigate that. Um, you could let's see. Um, you could fill, uh, you know, IPC the um, sixty twelve, I believe. You know, if you have in class three, if you go with class three, you you have a minimum amount of uh, air you could have uh, in mm -hmm. your soldering joint. So I think it's maybe seventy five percent fill or some something along those lines. Where so there it are some that... standards which will yeah. kind of make you sure that there is not going to be air. Yeah. anywhere in the soldering or in the PCB or somewhere else? It, yeah, it, it is an additional process to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay. Um, I, I don't think it's 
the default manufacturing technique could of course because it's less risky on earth to to not have that but yeah it, it, it is possible to to make some those requests uh they're generally more expensive <laughs> uh because okay we can go yeah. back to this i interrupted you we were talking about no, the no problem yeah so um i was mentioning the importance of uh heat management on pcbs and uh the, the only the only way to reconcile the simulation uh, and your expectation or of your board and um, is to actually run a test and to measure the actual temperature. So uh, what you would do, you would put your PCBs uh, inside the the chamber here, and uh, you would collect connect them to a plate. So you can see here the tray here is actually uh, thermally controlled plate that could be either be very very cold or very very hot and you mount a thermocouple to your pcbs mm -hmm. and essentially you play with the temperature variation of that plate to verify that your the temperature of each component match what so you expected for simulation. example basically if you connect this plate to the places where your radiator would be uh, exactly. otherwise connected you can kind of uh, transfer the heat from the plate to your board or you can Ex transfer the cold to your board exactly yep you're because, right on yes <laughs> because there is no air so there is no other way actually to to control temperature of your board <laughs> yeah 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 no yeah that that's it and uh what you do you know that those chamber are not big right so what you do is you test subsystem by subsystem mm -hmm. you know if you work with the with a space telescope for instance uh, they, they could not put the space telescope in a uh, in a vacuum chamber so how they did is they put subsystems they validated their subsystem model and uh, since the simulation match the actual measurement, then they're able to build up mm -hmm. on top of each subsystem model and recreate the overall system thermal behavior. So um, that's how you, you 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 approach a PCB design essentially, and in general, any spacecraft design, you you start with lower level subsystem, you validate your model, then you build up onto that. Oh, this is interesting. Um, so basically, you simulate. You build it, you measure it, you compare the real results with your simulations. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there is something wrong, you need to find what is wrong in the simulation, for example. And once a simulation is showing exactly or very similar results as what you measure, then mm -hmm. you can kind of assume that uh, if you play with the simulations in different kind of ways, then you can kind of get data even without actually maybe testing it directly in the chamber yep 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 you're, okay. you're absolutely right yeah yeah mm -hmm. and um the yeah as i was mentioning you know heat management on a on a pcb is extremely extremely important you know every what you lose because of you know conversion loss for instance if you build a a DC to DC converter, for instance, you know, if you have a 90% efficiency versus a 92% efficiency, you, but those 2% can make a big difference uh, at the end. So uh, because of those thermal, those very strict thermal environments. So uh, every, 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 especially when you deal with the power conversion, you, you want to be extremely careful uh, about efficiency in your system there. Why because... the thermal would influence the efficiency? Because, for example, if the chip gets uh, hot or components will get hot, then the efficiency um, efficiency may go lower. Or yeah, so the you, you need to dissipate that heat, right? Um, oh, so okay, I understand. Otherwise, it's just like I understand. I understand a, now. So a thermal battery is a heat accumulate, accumulate. If it has nowhere to go, then it could get very, very hot. Okay, so maybe. We started another topic, power mm -hmm. management and batteries. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, power management. So um, that's something what is always on, I guess. Um, batteries in space is 
it, it's a very sensitive uh, part of the design uh, uh, because you 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 deal with uh, most of the time with a high volume of energy that is usually sensitive to heat or temperature variation. Uh, so you want to keep that specific subsystem in, in very tightly uh, control, uh, mm -hmm. in, in temperature control. Um, so is it usually like in the middle? <laughs> it, it is well, uh, the battery pack is very well carefully designed. Uh, so you, 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 yes, you, you don't expose your battery to wide temperature, wide temperature. So range. there are also some kind of like heaters or something, or, or is it just do. isolation or? Yes, you, you have heaters. Um, or coolers. You, uh, as well. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every, I would say in general, every piece of the, uh, of the, of a spacecraft is, is thermally controlled to some extent uh, they there is nothing that is left to but is it clear. now when i i'm thinking about this like can you use the for example heat which is coming from the oh no you have to hmm, what i'm thinking about is if you control this heat with the energy like battery or something but that would be wasting energy can you control it with some kind of flow of the heat from the sun and from the other side of the yes uh, you, 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 your intuition is good so the you 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 have different type of material on a spacecraft um, um, you will have uh, material that have a very good emissivity which means like they are very good at emitting the heat away mm -hmm. and uh, also very good at absorbing the heat mm -hmm. right so generally it goes together so if, if the material is very good to absorb some heat can also dissipate pretty easily some of them will be insulation right so and you have to play with those two insulation and high emissivity material to find the right balance um, so, so you, you can somehow like mechanically connect more RIs together or or uh, mm -hmm. or can you like electronically connect more elements which you need oh, okay that's yeah, interesting yeah yeah you can do that so you, you also the way you you orient your your spacecraft oh, yeah. could help uh, control the temperature uh, what you would do typically is you would you you could rotate your 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 spacecraft to distribute the heat evenly you know or instead of having the same side facing the sun all the time you could slowly rotate it so the heat is distributed around your spacecraft so so the point is uh, the environment the controlled air environment is not like using standard heater or air conditioning and powering it by it, <laughs> by electricity you, but... you you will have heaters definitely and you will to to keep the system really warm. but yep mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh and you will have a radiator to 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 cool it down yep so you and it's yes uh if if you don't uh, typically you would have a heater inside a insulated compartment but right? would so this heater want... be powered by electricity by the battery yeah for instance yeah mm -hmm. or by solar panel or mm -hmm interesting hmm? mm -hmm. wow i <laughs> i would say like it's wasting energy <laughs> uh it is uh, yeah so let let, let uh, if you take the situation where you are you, you don't get any sun so let's say you are on the that's uh, true that's true on the other yeah. side of the earth for example on the earth no... yes yeah. exactly yeah you need to keep your system warm so you need your the energy from your battery to to keep the overall system warm if, if you stay there for yeah you can start calculating something on the processor <laughs> I, 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 yeah <laughs> um okay uh we can move to the next picture what do you have uh here um ah, i guess I, this is the cube rover 
this is yeah so that was uh a, um another version of our rover we we developed in partner with uh, the Carnegie Mellon University it was the um the iris rover so it's another uh it, so it's uh, little bit it's not the cube rover it, no, it's not. It's not. It it it, it shares the same philosophy of developing the, a small rover that could go that could that could sur survive the lunar environment, and uh, we, we we worked with a, with a university to to test uh, to test some aspect of, of the design. Uh, here it was. Um, we were doing some um, EMC testing and EMI testing, um, so you can see the rover in the anechoid chamber here. Um, and here is another uh, test here. So the, um, the 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 spacecraft we we develop in general need to satisfy uh, the mili military standard. So the, it's a mil standard uh, four sixty one. Um, so we we need to to demonstrate that our the system can. Uh, it's not susceptible for for instance to external radio uh, signal uh, but doesn't also emit uh, you know uh, radio signal that could perturbate other other system uh, so we have uh, we need to test for radio emission we also need to test for conducted emission so conducted emission is a noise radiated through cables but there and, are no uh, cables um here there is no cables uh the, the there is some cables when you are uh, mounted to the lander so um or ah, yeah, space okay, so. oh so your device can uh, the, make problems in the rocket for example exactly rocket. yeah yeah exactly yeah if you have a payload mounted to a lander you know we, we need to verify that that specific payload once it's connected to our lander will not create problems mm -hmm. uh, so we 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 need to each payload need to demonstrate that uh, essentially so mm -hmm. those those type of compliance okay that makes sense um, yeah. mm -hmm. um the, there was a lot of testing to do <laughs> um uh i mentioned conducted uh immediate um uh, susceptibility as well you know if if another system makes a lot of noise you know you, you don't want your system to reset for instance so mm -hmm. you need to show that your system just for its own sake is robust to external perturbation um is there something like esd testing or there is some something yeah. similar or, or for higher voltages yep. yeah 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 so uh, esd can uh, generate definitely is on set of radio problem you know <laughs> if the earth system is not exposed directly to electrostatic discharge uh it could still be sensitive to you know the radio generated by those type of events so you you you, you need to test to esd uh for uh general <laughs> system robustness uh but you you also need to to zap your system just to make sure that when it's exposed to electrostatic discharge uh, it's, not yeah. it's not going to be damaged also there is uh, you you need to have a good uh, uh, bonding with the rest of your or, or, with the rest of the system uh, to not trigger electrostatic discharge uh, during the critical phase of your mission let's say I have a payload that is mounted to i don't know uh or, or some a subsystem that is mounted to uh a fuel uh, oh, uh dispenser yeah. for instance yes you so you, you you don't want your your a bad grounding between that piece of the system and something that could be uh generate some an explosion for instance so bonding is is very important there and, and so and grounding as well um nasa has uh, I had some some, uh, some things here nasa has some uh, handbooks uh, that essentially provide some guidance there how to mount grounding your... for spacecraft 
Yes. That's kind of funny. One on one. <laughs> one on one. So yeah, so it's, it's very specific, but it's extremely useful. You know, when you, especially when you join the space industry, you're like, oh wow, that's a very complicated puzzle. But there is a lot of in general good documentation from NASA that help you. You know. Uh, trim, so gra grounding um, in spacecraft it means everything has to be connected together, not to ground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so here is a, I just extracted a little section here just to show an example of how you how you would ground your your system so and how you would connect uh, different subsystem together. Here's a show you know typically how you would prevent ground loops. Um, so you don't want mm -hmm. ground loops in your system. So uh, it's recommended to isolate you oh, know if you have some signal cool, going from yeah from just to break the loop essentially. So if you don't have any isolation. You, you could have a ground loop here circulating mm -hmm, created with your two system. So what's generally recommended is to isolate those interface between. So uh, this can be, for example, system. payload, and the other one can be the spacecraft yep. and so, or something. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 So is that just a uh, just just an example? They have different topologies depending on your on your application uh, interface of communication and all of that. So that's interesting. Um, so yeah. even mm -hmm. like. In uh, this, uh, I don't know, e even between different places inside of spacecraft, you can have different potentials uh, yeah. just because it is so large or? Uh, be 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 yes, uh, and uh, because of the, um, you know, the, the, the environment, you know, when you with the with the air, you know, the, during takeoff, uh, you have a lot of um, electrostatic phenomena that are, that, that are happening, uh, you know, um, with the friction of the air on different material. Uh, you want those charges to be distributed evenly on your system, not accumulating in, in some spots. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's in the atmosphere and in space, as, as we mentioned before, uh, then the effect of the sun hitting the, the your material could generate the its own charge that out of, Do you know uh, uh, how much voltage, for example, can be between different sides uh, of the spacecraft? Kilovolts. I mean, can, wow. Can, yeah. So if you if you don't mitigate them, yeah. So it could be, uh, yeah. It's it's like an electrostatic discharge, you know. Um, but low, low current, so high, even high, if, high if, voltage. Even if it is kind of shorted together, you still can have kilovolts. Well, or oh, because no, you short it, then there will be no kilovolts. Right, exactly. Yes. Oh, if you okay. have true, truly separated parts, you know, if you don't take care of those phenomena, yeah, you could have pretty high uh, potential there, and you could have harking that completely destroy solar panels, for instance, if they are not grounded correctly. You could just get blew away cells of your uh, solar panel. Um, uh, I'm sure if you <laughs> if you look online, or you can have a pretty cool picture of. Uh, <laughs> Uh, ESD damage due to uh, 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 um, electrostatic damage, yeah, in space. So that's uh, yeah, that's uh, that's another piece of the puzzle to to play with. Interesting. Okay, okay. we can move to something um, else. Um, let's talk about uh, a little bit more about maybe uh, PCBs and other challenges that okay. are happening in, in space. So. What we didn't cover is the, so we, we covered the packages, but another phenomena here that is kind of tied to the soldering technique is the the tin uh, whiskers, that they, they, they call it like that here. So whiskering is, uh, is, uh, is a crystallization phenomena that happens uh, when you use uh, lead-free um, tin. Um, so that those are, I don't know if you can see here can very see well, spikes, but yeah. yeah, those are little spikes that are conductive. Um, and as you can imagine, they could be very problematic. It's basically uh, growing tin. From yes. It? Okay. Yeah. From the tin. Yeah. If you, if you use a, a leaded tin, you, you don't have those type of phenomena. Um, but as you can imagine, it, it is, uh, it, it could be very problematic here. For instance, here it's a little oscillator and you have some 
you could have whiskers that essentially short your the chassis of your oscillator with the your oscillating pin, for instance. Wow, I would and never it, have thought something like this is happening there. Yeah. Um, other, just to give a, an idea of the scale of things, so they're very, very tiny. So that's a uh, human hair here, and uh, you have, they can be anywhere. So what you do, so... Okay, I have a question before we continue. Yeah. So yep. does it mean even the components, what you are using, you would like to use the LEDIT components and, and not the ROS Complain components? Or you can use ROS Complain, but use the LEDIT solder? What you do is you can use parallel coding on your PCB just so you cover everything and you don't have, you, you essentially encapsulate all your exposed uh, 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 sorry, uh, pins uh, with spiraling, so you don't have those type of, you know, uh, whisker there that 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 could happen. Uh, what, what you can what do? Name? How do you cover? Uh, what do you cover it with? Uh, Parallel cutting? Parallel? Parallel? What is it? Can you can you search for it? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Parallel. Maybe I don't have the right pronunciation. Uh, coding equipment. Coding, parallel. <laughs> ah. Or from all coding. Okay. So, um, all right. So, let's see. So, yes, to mitigate uh, the, the the whiskers, you can also use parallel coding to encapsulate all of your electronic under a layer. Wow. Uh, uh, it's a couple micrometer uh, i think uh, thickness it's very very thin layer but that traps all the outgassing and those type of phenomena under a layer so uh it, it's conformal cutting essentially <laughs> okay uh, is it useful also for all the kind of different environments like can you use it for standard boards you oh yeah somewhere? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's widely used in the in the industry. Yeah, in general. Is it uh, if helping you want to protect... also with uh, water or something? Humidity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was really to, even to like the micrometer or very small tick uh, uh, is going to. Yeah, it, it is a it it it's applied. Uh, it's very interesting actually. Um, it, it's a. Uh, you you put it, uh, your PCB inside a chamber essentially, and it's a gas essentially that that cover everything on your PCB. Um, so you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to cover your your PCB with conformal coding if you plan to do some testing on it or if you plan to probe it because it makes yeah. things <laughs> super harder or even to rework you know because everything is covered. So definitely you know it's the final step in the process of uh, putting a PCB together. Uh, if you want to protect it to outside environment you, you would apply some uh, burn coding um go for more coding okay um, um so that would help to prevent for example these whiskers yes 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 or what you can do also on some uh bgas for instance you can um uh, if you if you cannot find the a late, let it compliant BGA. You could you could re rebold your 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 chip essentially, so redo the your surface um, there. So, um, but that's an option as well. Um, so yeah, um, uh, let's see, system engineering. Um, um, NASA provide a very nice handbook, you know, uh, to help you walk through uh, uh, designing a hair, aerospace, uh, air, uh, spacecraft, uh, essentially, it, is. it will give you, you know, all the guidelines, how you should manage risk in a design, um, uh, how you, you know, project, how, how do you, how do you manage mass power? Uh, you know, oh, actually, I didn't mention that. So the importance of mass uh, in in space. Um, you, well, mass is very expensive. You know, on a spacecraft. 
you uh, i think the price tag in general in the market is about a million dollar for a kilogram or something something along that to my order of magnitude or maybe it changed recently but um um i guess it depends where you would like to deliver it yeah exactly well taking bringing things to orbit i think it, it's about that price tag you know, I, maybe i speak out of term here but i but i'm not i i think i'm not too far so um uh, the mass is very important on PCBs uh, because, well, when you fly a spacecraft, uh, in order to do the vibration testing we, we we mentioned earlier, you need to know the mass of every component, right? Uh, because you need to simulate it and and therefore verify that all the structure can withstand the mass you have. Uh, for PCBs, it's it's pretty interesting, uh, and and I, w I wasn't doing that in my medical <laughs> experience uh, background but um, for uh, space uh, when i design a pcb I, I take into account the mass of every component i have on my pcb so uh, the all the ic's all the resistors i use you know they have a mass associated with them so you so. have you have atmel you have microchip and then you are thinking, oh, this one is a little bit lighter, so I'm going to use this one. I I, I would not <laughs> say it's a it's a decision factor uh, <laughs> necessarily, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, when I generate a, a bill of material, it's nice to have. All right, my PCB will be 200 grams or something like that, you know. And you know, uh, you know, and then you can give that number to your uh, structural. Yeah. engineer and at we'll the end of the day, model that microchip and atmel they are all microchip anyway they, <laughs> yes, it's true <laughs> uh so uh yeah the i uh, yeah at the end of the day it's nice to have uh, the mass of your of your pcb before you fabricate them um um so mass yes is important and and as a system engineer what you look for um a system engineer manages the mass and power, how it gets distributed uh, on a spacecraft. And uh, what the, what they have typically is they have a budget, they have to work, they have a maximum mass, they have to a limit uh, of the mass they have to work with. And um, they have to they, also spread it around. They, yes, they have to spread it across subsystems. You know, let's say if uh, the maximum allowed mass for your system is one ton, for instance, one, one ton, then you have to figure out, all right, how do I, how do I distribute that mass? Or what's the maximum allowable mass per, per subsystem, you know? And um, because you don't want to exceed the, the mass. So depending on the phase of the project you are in, you, you allow different uh, margin uh, in your system, so you, let's say uh, you're, you're given to to design a PCB, and you say, "All right, you you have 100 grams budget, so that's your maximum budget there." When you are very early in the design phase of your PCB, you don't know exactly what part you're going to use, right? So you, you may swap components. You don't know just yet because of the maturity of, of your design, of course. And therefore, at the very beginning of the of the project, you have a higher tolerance or, um, or your final mass estimate. But as a project progress, you know that margin becomes narrower and narrower because you you are you are expected to know at the end of the day what the final mass of mm -hmm. your of your system is. So that 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 those type of information that NASA provide, you know, the, those type of guidelines essentially that mm -hmm. help you design a good spacecraft. Um, so. Um, yeah, so does so... it mean like, for example, for to conduct the heat, you are not going to use metal, you can use something what is li or light Wait. metal, you will use light metal or something? Um... Because copper yeah, is yeah, quite could... heavy, I guess, when you, when you have it in PCB, that makes the PCB quite heavy. You, you could, you, you, yeah, you could, uh, I, well, no, your, your copper is, uh, we, uh, copper, yeah, could be used on aerospace, is used in the aerospace PCBs, uh, definitely. Yeah, it, it's heavy, so, um, but yeah, you, you, you use take that half into... of that instead of two of that. 
uh, if you if you want the, the the then what you what you have to manage is the if you decide to go with one ounce of copper then you need to say to think all right is this good enough for my thermal management you know two ounces is better than one ounce to to act as a heat sink so okay. um, but or, so so do you need to also consider like weight of the copper i don't know i don't know um, how much it actually weighs i don't we, know yeah, 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 yeah. Some yeah, you of the take PCBs the... are quite heavy, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You you know the layer of, you know you know the number of layers you have on your PCBs. You know the mass or density of the of the copper. Therefore, you can extrapolate the the mass of your bare PCB. So yeah. does it mean also you have to be careful how you distribute the components and the copper on the PCB? Um. Right. No. Yes, according in general. to weight, I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, let's say if you have um, uh, a piece, a piece, a section of your PCB that is not strongly mounted to mm -hmm. your chassis, for yeah. instance. Let Let's say if you have a big isolation transformer, just throwing something there, uh, that is pretty m m massive. Yeah, you know. I, okay, I understand. Then it will, we don't need to speak then it would shake. This. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's go back to this. Uh, NASA system engineering handbook. Can you download it? Mm -hmm. You you can download it. Yep. Yep. It's publicly uh, available. I may, um, I may so search for this and maybe download it and have a look what is inside. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can fuck around. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. Do we have something? Do we have something to talk about safety standard? Uh, oh, maybe I had one here. Yes. Um, Safety standard. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, about safety standards. So, uh, NASA uh, classify its missions. Uh, its missions. Sorry. Um, so, depending of the the risk, you know, depending if you bring uh, if, if if you have a crewed mission versus a robotic mission, for instance, you you will have you know different risk associated with that. And in order to categorize them, you have several class of, of missions. Um, and from those class of mission, essentially, you, you, you generate a, a new set of, of requirements that goes with it. So for instance, um, if you have a, a crude mission, for instance, maybe you, you, you will be asked to demonstrate a higher level of redundancy throughout your system hardware, software, you know, risk mitigation and all of that at a project level as well. You know, how you, how did you manage your project or what type of testing did you do to demonstrate your, your system was viable and all of that. De de depending on the, the, the circumstance of your mission, you, you, you need to demonstrate a level of uh, design testing uh, and uh, design consideration uh, that satisfy the that you lower the risk enough that it, 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 it is acceptable uh, to, to have that mission. There so is always a risk. It's, before yeah. you start designing anything, you have to read a lot of documents to actually mm -hmm. understand what it is, it, what it expected from you to design. It, it is true. Yeah, you, 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 you start a project with requirements and if you know when you start your project you know what the purpose of your, of your project is and you, you know what mission you will accomplish so based on that you in your requirement management standards. yeah yeah you uh you 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 need to capture the right requirements to to to, to address the right uh set of uh, so a b c d industry. these are all different uh, kind of missions yeah. yeah class yes they are class of missions yes so what are, <laughs> what are the biggest challenges when you are designing these boards is it like what is the most stress like is it going to work when we are going to end <laughs> yes that's uh that's uh, definitely uh <laughs> A stressor. Uh, the what's challenging is 
you, you need to think of every, everything, right? Every 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 little detail matter. Uh, and uh, the, 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 as uh, say, uh, as people say, you know, the devil reside in, in, in the detail, right? So you 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 need to pay attention to every aspect of your design. And um, if something goes wrong, you always want to recover in such a way that you can resume the operation. So do you uh, have if, some people which are uh, thinking like, or which will be pointing out, what if this will go wrong? What if this will, uh, yeah, will go wrong? Yeah, we do, we, we do that. We do that. So we do uh, what is called uh, a failure mode analysis. So essentially we, we take a look at our at our design and uh, we say, all right, resistor B fell in a short circuit manner. How does that propagate to the rest of your system? And then we do the fault tree analysis and we, we, we look at what are all the consequences there. We associate some score. And if the score passes a threshold that is not acceptable, then we need to add either mitigation, additional mitigation in our circuit to address uh, that risk wow. uh, or if the risk is low enough then we accept the risk that uh, some failure could happen there so as well so you that's uh, definitely a tedious work you know to go over your design and look at every failure combination you know, possible there but we, we have to do that um, uh, because <laughs> we can go we, we cannot go to the moon and push a reset button or unplug and plug it back uh, so uh, it, it, it is acceptable, you know, to it, it, it make to re, if you have a fault to to recover, you know, in um, in a kind of uh, you know low power mode or low activity mode, you know, where you sustain just the bare minimum, and you can connect to it and understand. All right, what was what was the failure mode? How 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 can I recover from that error? Do I need to reprogram a processor, you know, to circumvent a failure or work around the circuit? Do I need to sh turn off a particular peripheral or something like that. So you need to always have that fallback plan where you could, where you can, uh, uh, could to, to be able to continue to continue operation. So then... at least maybe you can have a faulty circuit, but not faulty mission. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, let's say if you lose control of, I don't know, <laughs> uh, 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 let's say one camera dies, for instance, and you have a pair of camera. You, you can you could maybe continue your mission with just one camera, just fine. Yeah. Maybe you won't hit all your your milestones, you know. But maybe you could do, you know, ninety percent of your mission. Uh, it's just it's just I an understand. example. Yeah, I understand. But so these are the like biggest challenges. Like be sure everything, or not everything, but at least not whole mission is going to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, there, there is a lot of logistic that goes in preparing a launch, putting all the piece of hardware together. So you, it's not like you can launch a, a system every week or every month, you know. So you, you have those windows and you, you, you... And it costs a lot of money. And it costs a lot of money, of course. Yep. Mm -hmm. But this is interesting because, you know, I learn a lot from failing. Mm -hmm. And now when you are building something which you can only fly, which you are going to fly, for example, for the very first time, mm -hmm. you don't really have like much space to learn from failing. And uh, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, because you, you never can right? think that's... about everything, <laughs> you know? But, yeah. Yeah. That's a challenge, right? So that's uh, that's part of the challenging side of the job uh, is to if you can simulate it you simulate it and uh, thanks thank goodness we can simulate uh, <laughs> everything nowadays uh, pretty rapidly you know with the uh, you know very very powerful computers um, so yeah um, everything is done through simulation so, so sure. how did you find job in this company I, I applied uh, just um, I, I, I wasn't expecting, uh, you know, to, to, 
to, to be hired, you know, because I was happy at my at my previous job, and uh, you know, I was like, hey, I always wanted to 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 design rovers for uh, for spacecraft. So, and there was that opportunity that came up in in Pittsburgh, uh, in Pennsylvania, and I was like, well, let, let's try it. You know, who knows? And yeah, it turned out great. And uh, yeah, I. I, I love it. It's just, uh, it's, it's really fun. And the team is just wonderful. You know, it's, uh, we have a lot of to, to demonstrate, but it, it's very, very exciting, you know, and uh, everybody is passionate about space. You know, it's, uh, it's an, it's a nice community to, to work in to, for sure. Um, a so lot of passion what do you and, think yeah. if uh, someone would be interested to work in this area, what they need to do or how they how they or what do you think can help them to actually get the job in this kind of company? Should they have some kind of previous experience in some areas or? Yeah. Um, so uh, most importantly, I think it's just a passion for for space, right? So we, you, you because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. Uh, it's def it, nothing is easy in space. Uh, and designing a system that live in space is de definitely difficult and as quite a lot of challenges so i would say you know the the right attitude for somebody that, that want to enter the space industry is you know showing a record that of persistence you know um, facing tough challenges you know and uh resolving tough challenges through design or you know working being good working in teams uh as well um being creative uh, there is a lot to demonstrate and a lot of How they can demonstrate it before applying for the job? Uh, well, through, you know, similar type of projects, you know, um, I would mention in the robotics, for instance, field, you know, there is a lot of cool things that are happening right now on, on Earth. And, the, the, you know, the, the way you approach, uh, uh, you know, solving a problem uh, could be applicable you know, if you if you feel if you have the crea creative uh, mind, I think you c it could be also very useful if you apply to, I don't know, uh, car industry or space industry, for instance. Just to, I, I think the the aspect of teamwork, creativity, you know, and being able to face tough challenges and being persistent, I think are are really key for for working in the in the space industry. Uh, teamwork definitely because they you know they, it you is it, the most important because you you there is no such thing that a superman that can do everything on its own you, a, a spacecraft is very complex system and you you have to work together to find to, to find solution come up with good designs you know being very receptive to the critics you get from experts as well you know taking into account i always ask uh, like uh is it okay if i give you stuff or when I'm hiring someone, <laughs> like I ask, what if I mm -hmm. tell you that you should do it different way? Are you going to be angry? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you know you have uh, when you get critics, uh, you, you 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 from experts, you, you accept you accept them. You know you uh, could, but you some could people, challenge them don't. if you have the right <laughs> right. You, you could challenge them if you have the right arguments. You know because you know you you need to have a. You have you have to have a critical mind. You 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 have to understand why a, a system is, another way is maybe better, but you you have to be open uh, to different perspective as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. what exactly you are designing? All right. So we are designing uh, an astrobotic uh, two landers that are called uh, the Griffin Lunar Lander and the Peregrine Lunar Lander. So Lander um, is the device which is going to, well, which will be released from a rocket or something, and it will land on the moon. Exactly. That's the Lander. The, yes, exactly. So the, the Lander uh, lands on the moon, and they are designed to carry uh, different types of payloads, as you can see in the pictures here. And we have the we have two landers, so the Peregrine uh, that was here. And the Griffin Lander that is here, the Griffin Lander is designed to carry a big rover. And the one you can see in the picture actually is called the Viper Rover that is designed to find water uh, at the South Pole of the Moon in 2023. Um, 
And so, we, you are designing also this rover? We are also designing the rovers uh, that I'm going to show here. So we have uh, the Cube Rover, that is the smallest rover of our family of rovers. So we have, just like the CubeSat uh, product line, we have uh, a different size of Cube Rovers that are also designed to carry uh, custom payloads uh, in their belly here. And our biggest size rover is called the Polaris Rover, um, which is designed for a polar mission um, on the moon. And those rovers are also a general purpose rover, and they can be designed to carry bigger payloads in the order of 100 of kilograms. Also be, are capable of processing the uh, lunar dust, uh, the regolith, um, um, and collect it in a bucket, essentially. And I've seen um, on the top of the page, you mm -hmm. are looking maybe for new engineers who oh, will help you with yes. this. Oh yes, we, we love help. Uh, <laughs> so yes, we are we are looking definitely for uh, all type of backgrounds. You know, electrical engineer, um, mechanical engineer, software engineer. So uh, definitely all the background and uh, are, are welcome uh, uh, at Astrobotics. So uh, we, we are looking for passionate people and uh, talented people as well. So yeah, um, yeah, it's great and <laughs> great place to work. <laughs> definitely unique. <laughs> and uh, that's everything for today's video I would like to say thank you so much Cedric and also uh, thank you so much Astrobotic and also other engineers from Astrobotic Chris, Andrew uh, thank you for answering the questions what I, I had them for I don't know for quite a long time and I always wanted to know answers uh, what is different between designing boards uh, which will fly to space and the boards that I normally design and and uh, you helped me to understand a lot about this process so thank you very much what about you uh, did you find this video useful do you have any questions leave comments if you like this video, don't forget to press like button. If you would like to see my future videos, don't forget to subscribe. I would like to thank you very much for watching this video and uh, see you next time. Bye.